Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you only knew how excited I am to be here, and I promise you one of the first things we're going to do is move around a little bit. Is that all right? Yes. I tell you, I, I really had the greatest admiration, almost love for Andrea and talking to her over these weeks, and then she puts me on this program behind that great speaker. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> uh, I am visiting here from... Uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, and um, but I am a, a beach girl, an ocean girl, and uh, so whether I'm here or there, what is it? I can hear the surf and smell the air. <laughs> so I love being in your city, and I am in Florida most times. I did work, I went to work for Walt Disney World. I, I was recruited with them in college years ago, many years ago. Had the opportunity to do that. But my real love and my passion is teaching and education. And I want to tell you that I spent 13 years in public high school in Orlando. I was in the second largest high school in the state. That time we had 3,500 students in three grades. We had great, we had great, um, what was then called the tech prep. We had vocational education. We had the college prep. We had everything under one roof. It was too big, but it was a great experience. And then in graduate school, I worked uh, and basically had the chance to work with every student in Orange County, Florida, 13 to 17, who had been dismissed from the system. Uh, they really, they were in a, they, they were in what I call an alternative school, but they really didn't have an alternative because they weren't 16. So that was a real joy. That's joyful, as you know. Uh, and if you would, I know the books are coming around, but just don't even fool with them yet. You know as teachers, you hand something out and then you're gone. And you're there. So thank you. Thank you because we're going to be moving. But, but I, had that, I had that opportunity and, and I always worked with students. And because I'd had, and this isn't going to be all about me, but I do want to tell you a couple things. Because I'd worked with Walt Disney World, uh, how did I get to go on and, and work in education too? Is that I was in Florida, I loved it uh, because of personal reasons, sickness of my mother, and I had to move back to Tennessee. And because I'd worked for 13 years in school systems, you all know too, if you relocate, you think, no, I don't want to go back to square one. And you know something else, and I'm just going to say it to you all, and when Andrea said I could come work, be, be here with you today, I was excited because people who haven't taught school don't know really how hard it is. <laughs> and because I moved back up to Tennessee, I, I really thought I don't have the energy at this point to, to spend that time in the classroom and do what I need to do. I'd relocated. And so that's when I had the opportunity to be in the hospitality business in education. So I'd had the, guest, the um, Disney background with guest service, classroom teaching, and then had a chance to be part of the first training and development effort with a hotel in Nashville, Tennessee, the Opryland Hotel, that's a 3,000 room convention hotel, and be part of the, of the ground floor with training and development. So that was really a chance to find my passion because I had the opportunity to work in education in a fabulous business. And I have loved it every step of the way. I had a hotel complex or a campus large enough that we offered GED, college at night. We worked with the Department of Labor and uh, Nashville Tech Community College and put together a wonderful culinary institute. And we married the curriculum with the community college with our, uh, the CI, the, the, CI, I don't want to say the CIA, but the apprenticeship with the um, Culinary Association and had a wonderful program. So those are the things that I love. And I have to tell you that sometimes it was frustrating for me too because sometimes I don't think guidance counselors really understand what it is that we do. And I think as we talk about hospitality and industry, we have to market that. And this is my own little commercial to, to talk about that, but to say that um, Sincerely, I know what it is you do. I appreciate what it is that you do. And I also know that it's a calling. It really is. And I know in, in my life, and I'm looking at a career from the, what is it, backside now, not both sides now. Uh, some of the things in the, the great careers that, that people have the opportunity to be part of in an industry that we're, that we're part of and that we're proud of. Uh, I also want to say that when I have a chance to come to this coast and come to your beautiful state, I just can't wait. With the, with the industry and because I love to travel, I've had a chance to visit some beautiful places on this globe. 
but the first time I drove from Sausalito, California to Big Sur, <laughs> I said then that my eyes have never seen anything that, any more beautiful than this. And I don't have to leave this country to just to look at, to feel it, to see it. And so thank you for having me here. And I, I, I wanted to say that to you. Now, <laughs> now, everything I learned about service, I learned from Minnie Mouse. Mm -hmm. I will be friendly, polite, courteous, and helpful at all times. I know that the non-negotiable is safety, that it's all about safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. I also know that there are things that never change. For example, right now while we're sitting here, at Disneyland and at Walt Disney World that at the Erie Haunted Mansion there are 999 gallivanting ghosts and sprightly spirits. <laughs> the Erie Haunted Mansion is dead ahead <laughs> and that they are still looking for one volunteer for that 999 and a ghost will follow you home. <laughs> so some things and I say that to talk about consistency. Why, when I was so young, did I have to memorize a 16-page spill, and I can't tell you why I can still say some of those things? It's because every guest bought the same ticket. At that time, there were tour guides. I was one of them. And I had to memorize a 16-page spill. Because when a guest bought a ticket, we wanted to make sure that everybody's... And see, I can't even see your name tags. And so I have a hard one. Yeah. Taudine? That perfect. Well done. Even, and see, so you can say it in because of this accent, although accents are all in the vowel sounds, so I could try to be something I'm not, but we're going to talk about authenticity, and that's too hard. It's too hard for me to try to, you know. Uh, so what happens is every, whether Taudine bought a ticket or Marilyn, we want to make sure that they have the same experience, right? So that is why. And before we could improvise ever, Someone followed us and we had to give the spill correctly so that there was no doubt that every experience was the same. I started my career with Walt Disney World and now I still do workshops for Disney Institute. The Disney approach to quality service and the Disney approach to training, selection and engagement training. So those are some of the things that, that are opportunities that I have. What we're going to do today is, let me just say it, one, two, three. We're going to go through some participant materials. And this is a class, and Andrea already mentioned this, but this section, this material was developed for entry level, entry level service staff. Entry level service staff. The American Hotel Lodging Association created it. It's in the process of a rewrite, I'm going to say that. They created it because most of their members are hotels that have 300 rooms or, le or less, do not have an education team or a training team on staff, so materials that any department leader could deliver, and then also offer a certification with it. I also want to tell you that I had the opportunity with them to offer this. Actually, I guess you never get away, especially for me, it's in Orlando, with folks who were in the developmental program. Um, and they, their goal was to take some line level classes on kitchen stewarding, housekeeping, some of those roles. And we convinced them that if they're going to any job in the hospitality industry, whether you're front of the house, that we call the people that have that guest-facing responsibility, or heart of the house, people who are always taking care of a guest but may not ever see uh, someone other than an internal staff member, we said if anybody's going into this business, they better get service. They better get it. And so I've told you a little bit about me. I wish I could, and I hope I have some time to learn more about you all and what you do. But one of the things that so we have some things that are in common and that are not in common, but you know something that we all have in common is that we are all customers, aren't we? Mm-hmm, we're all customers. Sometimes the customer mantra is I pay, I say. <laughs> right? I was told early in my career, the guests may not be always right, but they're always our guest. They're always our guest. In the, in the, even the, in saying the customer isn't always right or the customer is always right, well, they may not be until they aren't. And people who've been in service a long, long, long time over and over understand that going back for that repeat guest, once you've lost someone, think about yourselves. What happens? So today, we are going to talk about service. We're going to go through participant materials. 
we're going to go through the information just as you would or just if you are a entry level service worker or even if you are the CEO of the company there's still some rules about service that don't change and you may even say on the test and I can guarantee you right now you can say you know most of this is common sense and that's what people say to me you know but that service that all that's kind of is just common sense okay but common sense isn't always common practice, is it? No. I may know a whole lot more about organization skills and I can, they would always send me to all those Franklin Covey classes about my time and this and that. But, and I may know everything about organizational skills. I may know more than my desk, truck, or life would, would show, even though I study about it. And sometimes people can spout information, but they won't deliver the service, so we just don't do it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to just have a couple of little exercises to have you all focus on what's essential. What are some essential service behaviors? Because what happens, people will talk about service and we'll even do role plays and all of that, but in the moment, what do people say and what do people do to demonstrate that they understand what great service looks like. We're in the hospitality industry. Hospitality is the bigger picture, isn't it? <laughs> you think about the word hospitality. In fact, somebody just say to me, if I say the word hospitality and you say you represent the hospitality industry, who would say to me, I'm going to tell you what a definition for hospitality. Anyone? Who will be first? Yes, what's your name? Michael. Michael. Hospitable. Hospitable. Tell me more. All right. Take care of people regardless of what the situation or the circumstance is. Do you like that answer? Yeah. Well, I do too, and I also bought treats. <laughs> <laughs> and I have bought many, 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 many Ghirardelli chocolates from your beautiful part of the country. <laughs> but in Nashville, Tennessee, we make a little something called the Goo Goo Cluster. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. And I used to tell everybody that Goo Goo stood for Grand Ole Opry yeah. because I thought it did, you know? And I'm telling that I work for the company that owns the Grand Ole Opry, and yes, I have sung a song with Brad Paisley on stage. Yes. Yeah, I have. I don't usually say that in the first 10 minutes. But I said that Goo Goo clusters are made in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, and they were. And I said that they're Grand Ole Opry. We used them at the Opryland Hotel as our turndown. Have a Goo Goo Goo. Good night. Oh, no. oh, I know. It's beautiful. It's a, be it's a beautiful thing. And I was spouting off about the Grand Ole Opry, and that was great until I realized that the Grand Ole Opry started in 1925. <laughs> and these were the standard candy company in Nashville, Tennessee, made the first Goo Goo in 1912. So I had to change my spiel. I didn't like it. Judy, my, my friend Judy here is from Kentucky, and I gave her the opportunity to ask if she wanted a moon pie or a Goo Goo, and she took a moon pie. <laughs> They're made in Chattanooga. Tennessee. So I do have prizes. Thank you, Michael, for that uh, for that response. And you'll have time uh, some other time later. You think about warmth. You think about treating people the way they want to be treated. Golden rule is what do unto you would have them do unto you. And it's you know that's a message that's in all world religions, one way or the other. But the platinum rule is do unto people the way they want to be done unto. Yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about. What I want to do now is I'm going to ask you to get in groups of, and you all know the drill, pull together with about three, four, five people, and I'm going to give you a sheet. And we're going to just, for a few minutes, I want you to think about what are some essentials essentials of service. So you know what? We're going to play with an acronym. I know you've done it a million times and we're going to do it again. E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-S. -S -S -E I have a sheet for you and if you get in your group, somebody's going to have an E and you come up with as many service or descriptors of, of service as you can. So if you'll do that, we'll go. We'll do it in about five minutes. That's it. So let's make it quick. <laughs> Thank you. Just give them a letter. Big blue post. These are these are courtesy of Elizabeth, aren't they fabulous? Thank you, ma'am. Here you go. We got one. All right. I have markers if you want them. Yeah.
Alright. Let's do this. <laughs> That's cute. Yes. That works. I like the teaching. Because I tell you what we're doing. Have you all ever heard of Martha White cornmeal or Martha White flour? No? Yes. All right, you know, we came on at 10.30, so I've got to put a 25-pound bag of Martha White flour in a five-pound sack. You know what that means? Okay. <laughs> so, what we're doing is, and, 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 and as you all know, and my kids would say, hey, Miss P, I think you just kind of beat this to death. Have you heard that? <laughs> Can we just move on? So, with this, obviously, you all do this all the time, but you take and you work with recipes. So, we're looking at a recipe for service, aren't we? And you can take any word you want to, anything that you want to, and I know you all do that, know that. So with this one, workforce essentials, service essentials, I've done leadership essentials. What are some words that are essential that can put us on that same page in five minutes, right? And that's one of the things you're going to like about guest service goal. We talk about seven elements of service. But it's amazing what you can do and what you can teach in, we, in industry of pre-shift meeting in 15 minutes, isn't it? So quickly, you had a few minutes to do this. Some of the, the first, E, who had E? Let's just, let, tell us the words and then we'll smack them up on the, we'll put them on the wall. My degree, undergraduate degree is English, by the way, that's scary. All right? I can just read it? Uh-huh. And then we have another E, too, don't we? E, S, S, E, N. Walt Disney says, if you can't spell a word three ways, you aren't creative, so if I don't have to spell it, no problem. Give me, give me your E's and then we'll come back. Go. Uh, eloquence, effort, etiquette, excellence, elaborate, educated, ease, eager, establish, establishment, evaluate, emulate, uh, entire, entire experience, and entertaining. All right, and here's what I want to ask you right now. Remember we talked about behaviors, <coughs> making things real. Would you tell me, please, what do people say and what would people do in the service environment if they are eager? They are eager. <laughs> no, somebody, I hope you can't take the initiative. Okay, we're going to talk about initiative. If people take the initiative, what they what might they say? Let's approach you and ask, how may I help you? All right, they may approach and say, hey, may I help you? Absolutely. They ask leading specific questions. Ask probing questions. Oh, I think that I'm not supposed to teach you the test, but ooh, I think I've seen that. Yeah. 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 If there's a problem and they don't know the answer, I'll find I'll out. I'll find out. Yeah. Absolutely. So you have initiative there. And we have intuition. There's going, there going to be a couple of our seven ingredients in our service recipe. All right. Okay, there's an E. Could I ask my, uh, well, I'll grab it real quick. I need to have candy in my pocket, don't I? <laughs> they, they need to have candy in their pocket. I've already taken care of that. I'll get them, y'all. It's all right. Now, that's, that's great. Thank you so much. How about a new kind of idea? You can trade if you don't like it. Okay, S. Yes, let's have an S real quick. Let's do it. The first, do we have two S's? All right, you, you'll take some and you take some. How about it? All right? Safety, satisfaction, activity, surgery, serene, special superior, surprise, spotless, and support. Thank you. Great. Um, safety, and I, I did learn that at Disney so many years ago, and I will never forget it ever. Non-negotiable is safety. Non-negotiable, non-negotiable, non-negotiable. We know it from, in the food and beverage world, we serve safe, don't we? We know what it means when something has a grade and they put it on TV. We know what happens when, you know, if somebody is on social media and something happens with safety. Non-negotiable, always. Yes, and the big smile, thank you. The, the next S. Service with a smile, service shake, see. Gotta see what's going on. Special, sincere, share. For safety, salutation, sympathy, solution, surprise, that element of surprise. Okay, and that's one of our ingredients. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, supersede, suggest, and stay. Okay, thank you very much. And then you just said social media. Social media, absolutely. <laughs> and, and then, and if we will, let's put these on the wall someplace. We can even, oh, it won't stick. Ooh, plus, this is a brand new building. Never mind. We <laughs> know on the windows, is that all right, Judy? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because somebody has to clean it up. Oh, what do I need to get away from? Oh, okay, great. E S. Another E. Where's our other E? What you want to say? Or together S. 
Oh, we're at the end. Oh, we're at the end. Okay, okay. No, let's, let's go. Bye. Energy, excellence, exciting, efficient, evolving, every time, everyone, exceptional, ex extraordinary, and enabling. I love those. Yeah. Now, I know you aren't supposed to show favoritism to one letter over another, but I'm, I'm a double E, so I love the E. Exactly. And would you choose someone that can have, have your uh, second treat so you aren't greedy? Any of them. Uh-uh, that is right here. All right. E S S E N. Who has an N? Yes. We have. This is a hard one. We have nice, negotiate, necessities, navigate, needs, nurture, nimble, and network. Oh, only teachers. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best list. Would you outline those so I, I'm going to take that one with me? <laughs> I should have known. That's the best list I've ever had. <laughs> Team. Teamwork, trust, thoughtfulness, thankfulness as in appreciation, training, tiredless, thought, uh, truthful, talented, talkative, tenacious, tolerant, tactful, and the best one I think is teachable. Absolutely. And time management. Absolutely. I love these. I'm taking them all with me. <laughs> they are. Ah, that's a heifer that he put your name. Heifer they do. E S S E U P I. We have involved, interested, innovative, integrity, intuitive, and inspired. Great, thank you. And I'm going to get back with treats. I'm just going to move on. All right. A. Sorry, tripping on my chair. Um, we have approachable, attitude, acceptance, alternatives, ambience. Attentive, uh, attractive, mm -hmm. altruistic, affectionate, accountable, and assertive. Nice. Wow. <laughs> These are great. And see what you can do with the, with the word? Because where you are, everything, you have the essentials of, you name it, people will come up with it for you. L? L, right here. Okay. We've got um, listen, look, lovable, likable, languages, learner, livable, lifestyle, and lively. Thank you, thank you. Now with these, well, I'll, I'll get to the end. And then the last S? We have um, safety, sanitation. Great. Smile, sincere, service, sympathize. That's good. Um, You're creative. We, we have this SOS, stay on station. All righty. Uh, satisfaction, success, and standard. Tell me about what do people say and do when they stay on station? That means that they don't, they don't, they make sure the problem is solved because they're where they need to be to make it happen. All right, great. And in our in our recipe, we're going to talk about that with follow through. With follow through. When we take a look at service, it's all about the stories we tell, isn't it? And so part of this information starts with the power of the guest story. The power of the guest story. And I can tell you with uh, in, in any coursework that we do that talks about service and this doesn't come didn't come just strictly from what we know about Walt Disney and telling stories is that people understand stories people tell stories people tell them on TripAdvisor people tell them to one another and typically when something's great we don't hear about it a lot but if something is is not a good example we know that we tell more people and now with a click of a button thousands of people and that can happen. So initially, so in the, in the very beginning of this information, it talks about how can you make a difference. And there's an activity, again, take a moment to think about the quality of service you provide to your guests. We aren't going to do this, but think of the time when you tried and succeeded in making a difference for a guest. And actually, if you own this for yourself, and you think about emotional connection, Loyalty lives in emotional connections. There is, there is so much power in that because it, it totally focuses on how something make us, makes us feel. And nobody wants to feel less than. Nobody wants to feel put upon. Nobody wants to feel ignored. And so when you think about the stories that have mattered to you most in guest service, and we're going to talk about this in a few minutes with your examples, is when you think of a time when service didn't go so well, we don't want to dwell on negatives, 
but you can typically go right back and go to a situation and think about how you felt and what that emotional connection was like. So that's what's important about the guest story. Were I teaching this, not only to you, but to frontline staff, I would say right off the bat, I want, let's just talk about the stories. I want you to think of a time, doesn't matter about the industry, doesn't matter about the geography, where it was, but think of a time when the service was less than what you expected, or you were disappointed, and people will go right back and they can give you, you can do it right now. You can do it right now. And there's an activity that we do about emotional connections that says just talk about that time. And you can have people getting angry right on the spot because it takes them right back. It takes them right back and you think about how it is, how you felt. So you don't want that to happen. So that's, that's the beauty of the guest story and how important it is to have people call those up. I'm going to do just the opposite. I want somebody in the room to tell me about a time where you live, where you had great service. In the light, okay, great. Um, it just happened a couple of days ago. Um, I went to a dentist. Can you talk a little bit louder? Sure, I went to a Thank dentist you. about two days ago, and um, the frontline person, the main receptionist, was just, I think, the best that I've ever, ever. experienced in my whole life. I mean, just <laughs> bubbly and friendly, and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting to see the dentist. I got in there on time. Mm -hmm. The dentist was very personable. You know, made my look actually looked at my chart. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and made accommodations. You know, for me as a special, sensitive, you know, mm -hmm. customer. Mm -hmm. um, everything was just top of the line. When it was time to go pay, I didn't even feel like I was paying. It was okay to pay four hundred dollars or whatever yeah. it was yeah. because everybody was just friendly. And I sat there and listened to this woman to somebody over the phone for 15 minutes just to schedule an appointment. And I thought, for sure, when she hangs up that phone, she's going to have something to, to say. say. But she did it. She was just See? like, shining, beaming. I was like, wow. And you, and, you, and you bring up, you bring another point. Everything speaks. Uh -huh. And as we cover this, everything speaks. And you're astute, so you're thinking, okay, I want to see if she says something. Because don't you feel that way when you walk off, you know they're, if, if the service isn't good? You have to be aware of everything. And what I would say to you, if you are teaching in hospitality, in the hospitality business, say from this day forward, you're going to be a service expert. You're going to watch it, watch it, watch it. And we're going to give you, we're going to talk through seven elements. These are seven elements that the American Hotel Lodging Association says are extremely important in that service recipe. And, and I want to tell you this, another just a personal piece, and I'm going to tell you these service basics. I will never forget them ever. We had one big, huge hotel in Nashville, Tennessee. We need to build a brand. We said, okay, we're going to go on the road, and we're going to open a 2,000-room hotel in Orlando, Florida, a mile from Disney. So what were we going to do? And you all know something. I read there's a, a writer named James Heskett, and he did something called Service Profit Chain. And what that is is if you take care of your employees, your staff, they'll take care of the guests, the profits will come. And we say, well, duh. And we were talking last night about how many times we don't take care of the people who take care of us. I saw a poem one time that said, we flatter those we scarcely know and praise the fleeing guest, then deal many a thoughtless blow to those who know us best, to those who love us best. Because in our industry, sometimes we do that. And someone last night who uh, works in a hotel mentioned that, you know, sometimes I think we talk about service, those of us in the business, and we know what we're looking for, but then many times we don't demonstrate it. Woo. You know, so, so there you have it. And when you're watching it, when we built that hotel, the GM said we have to come up, we're going to look at some basics. We, we identified six service basics. Get ready because then you don't need to write them down yet. But these are groundbreaking. <laughs> groundbreaking. Are you ready? Look everyone in the eye and smile. Speak first and last. Look sharp. Everything speaks. Look the part, act the part, think the part, be the part. My workstation, my area, my lobby. This, is this room beautiful? You know what happened today? 
Today guests are coming. You're the guest. Look what happens. Look what happened to me. I come I, I, I see all the 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 beautiful work, find your passion, preparing students for success, those kinds of things. Audio visual, coffee, refreshment. Guests are coming. Guests are coming. Look sharp. Know your stuff. Know your stuff. So whether I am in culinary, whether I'm in the front office, regardless, and this these materials are written specifically for hotels. Any service business, you want somebody to know what's going on. And somebody told me, do not say this in California, but I'm going to say it anyway. In Nashville, Tennessee, we'd have somebody and guest services. Hi, I'm Mary Jo Beth Becky from Ashland City, and I'm friendly, and I'm cute, and I'm perky. <laughs> but don't ask me where the tennis courts are, because I don't know nothing. I don't know anything. Can't help you. And in theme parks, you tell somebody what time something's opened or closed, they bought a ticket, they go and guess what? They think something's open late and it isn't. Those things, you don't know your stuff. And that's what happens to the competence piece. There's courtesy, but there has to be competence. <coughs> Discover and delight, find out what it is they want, and then if something goes wrong, make it right. And I want to tell you, the general manager of that 2,000 room hotel said to me, because we did a service list work and people are up moving around. How does it look? How do you do this? What do you say? And he said, I guarantee you, if we get the first three correct, the first three will be better than anybody in Orlando. And I basically, to that general manager, said, John, you're crazy. The mouse is here. All the hotels, the big hotels are here. Universal is here. He said, yeah, but people don't focus on that anymore. They just don't focus on it like they should. And you know what? We were named in the best, the top 25 places to work, and service scores went off the roof. Why could, could you measure that? If people look, if you look up, look at someone in the eye and smile, can you tell if they're doing that? Of course you can. Speak first and last, those are things. So that's always also in this recipe. But it doesn't have to be hard, but sometimes we just don't do it. And I'm going to tell you, I've worked with a lot of wonderful chefs, and I'm going to go in and say, but sometimes the more the medals, the more the medals, the more arrogant they can become. Come and do this, do that, and then wonder why people walk out the door. And then wonder. So it's, it's about taking care of everybody. That's about service. If you look on the bottom page one, guest service factoids, just fill those in like you think, would, that you think the answer would be there. Of course, they're dissatisfied with service. So there you have it. On page nine, And every time you see the star up in the corner, you're taking a look at some information that's important. And you have some blanks to complete the blank, fill in the blank. Let's just read those out loud. Is that okay with everybody? Blank and actively listen. Smile. That's where your smile's coming in. You have the list of the words on the left. I'm sorry, we're on page two. On the hippy dippy teacher book, I sent you the nine, I did, because it's nine in my book. Aren't you a mind reader? <laughs> huh? You all have the participant guide, so we're looking on page two. I even have it right up here to show me. <laughs> That's how good I am. There's an organization called Pow Wow, and they come to San Francisco many, many, many times. International travel people and you learn all the customs from different countries, but the smile is the same one in all languages. You don't have to work too hard on that one. You know, there are a lot of people that get a lot of work done and all, and I think that's great, but if you smile, these things that they call parentheses don't even show. So you don't even have to go and go get, get that free stuff they have on TV or anything. Smile works. Make guests feel special. special. Treat guests as individuals. At Disney's, we, at Disney, we don't say very important people. We say very individual people. Everybody's different. Meet guests. Expectations. expectations. Remember personal. Appearance. appearance counts. Thank goodness Andrea gave me a name tag because I don't know how to go to work without one. 
I don't know how to go to work with that one because in every job there's all, somehow there's a name tag. Dennis Miller said if you uh, if you reach age 35 and you still wear your name on a plastic name tag, you've made a serious career mistake. <laughs> but he never worked in hospice. Maybe he did. I don't know. I'll get ready to go somewhere and I'll think something's missing. Oh yeah, it's that big green name tag. Um, uh, wear your name tag proudly. There we go. Be polite at all times. Courtesy and competent. So with this, you're just we're just asking people to think about what's important. Think about what's important. The next page, and with this information, and I, I did put this here not to not to follow the game because the game board it won't work out the way if you're really playing the game. Take a look at this for a minute and tell me what do you what what's the whole point of this? You think? It can be a checklist. When a guest checks into, okay, please. You can do things right, but if you do one thing wrong, right. go right back to the very beginning and they probably won't do That's exactly right. If I make an omelet and I have five great eggs, it's looking good. I put that rotten egg in that omelet, ruins the whole thing, doesn't it? It's the way it works. And so what happens, the way that I always think about this is that you see the whole picture. When a guest stays, when someone goes into a restaurant, when someone walks out of your class at the end of the year, there are going to be a lot of things that happen along the way, but people step back and remember that whole experience, don't they? And they may come back and say, you know, I remember this one day in your class when we did X. But at the end of it, when they think about the people who've made a difference, they're seeing the whole. And so this is taking a look at the whole picture and saying all of us have to work hard to make that experience count, don't we? Think about that as a customer. There may, may be a place you love to do business with and you're thinking about all the service essentials, but let something terrible happen, you have to think about it. And typically, typically we, we will always look at the whole picture and that's something that I think is important always in the service industry. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this next page. I just want you to take a look at it. Um, it talks about engagement, and it and you have a picture, and it has a people are going to get appeal to that kinesthetic learner. Every day's game day, and the way I like to think about this is it's a game face. It's a game face, and I had a leader one time that said if you're going if you have trash to bring in. Leave it in the trash can on the way in the door. If you want to pick it up and take it home with you, you may do that. <laughs> Thank you. It's, you may do that. But when you're here, you're taking care of others. You're taking care of others. And so with this one, it's think about what face you put on when you come to work. And I just think every day is game day. Every day is game day. What's a game face? In country music, there's a song that even says that people, some people should wear warning signs, warning labels. <coughs> that there are people who are toxic to us, right? And, and if I'm up having a great day, everything's super, and I'm jumping up on, and I'm physically standing on this chair, and you come in and maybe you have that skull and crossbones, that bad situation, is it easier for you physically to pull me down or for me to pull you up? Which is easier? Yeah. For you to pull me right down. It's the same way emotionally, mentally. So we're talking about the service industry and providing service. We want to, it's, it's game day. It's game day. And put on that great face. And it says, as you learn more, come back and add more detail to your, the, the face of guest drawing. And that's it. We can't have a bad day. We can't have a bad day. So how do you view your guest? If you would, take a minute or two. Many of you are probably familiar with Goldman's work, uh, Emotional Intelligence. With Emotional Intelligence, the, the top three uh, elements or the top three characteristics, he says that people, how people want to feel is welcome, comfortable, and important. Welcome, comfortable, and important. And I think about in our guest business, we want people to feel that, like they're in our own homes. So with this one, American Hotel Lodging says to be engaged, write down some ways you have used to make guests feel. So what I would like for you to do, and just talk this just for a couple of minutes with someone next to you and think about a time 
a service experience where someone made you, something happened, and you felt important, or you felt valued, or respected, or special, or all of them. So think, think a minute and, and come up with a time when you experience that as a guest or a customer, all right? Take a minute or two. You all get the drill with this? Let's, let's just talk about a few of them and then we'll get into our seven elements. Uh, a time when you felt important. Yes. Legoland last summer and uh, my son lost his little Legos on the way out. On the, he left it on the counter and we were almost sure we did. So we went back and they were gone. But they took our phone number and address and they mailed it to us. They found it. They took the time to find it and mail it to us. So Amazing. it went above and beyond. I mean, Legoland, you know. Yes. Yeah, Legos get lost there. there. And yeah. exactly. that, is, and that is that, not only that delight, we, when we talk about our elements, we'll go back the delight factor, and also you were surprised. Yes. Someone told me that they left an iPad in Southwest Airlines in the seat back pocket, and in fact, I wish you would, I want this card so much, but she said that she got in touch with Southwest, and it had been a while, you know, a day or two. They sent, not only did they send back her iPad, but this note with it, it's tough when something that you treasure that's important to you is lost and we found it and it's important for it's important to us that we get this back to you and it has a safe journey home and this and that your friends at southwest it was amazing and she said no matter what if i'm going someplace southwest flies i'm there that you're telling the story again above and beyond now if i were going to ask a little quiz on something like this I might say something like, if I saw a, an article or a, something that appeared to be lost, you know, what would I do to to make sure that got in the right hands? Would I knock on a door and ask? Would I take something to a, a lost and found? And again, if someone's close by, of course you're going to see is is someone around that this could belong to. But then there also are systems, our systems, so that people will be able to find what it is that you've lost. Um, a time when someone felt valued, someone. Anybody have a special? Yes. Well, I was um, doing a, um, some meetings at a hotel. I asked for a standard room um, with, and then a separate conference room someplace that I could meet people. Mm -hmm. And when I walked in the hotel, I don't know how they knew it was me, but they greeted me by name. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the concierge took me up to my room, and it had an attached conference room right to the room. Mm -hmm. So I was super thrilled. Yeah. And it, it's, it's that amazement and the sad thing is we don't think it's going to happen do you? sometimes we don't you weren't expecting that now since you're there's concern about an exam a test there are examples like that situational questions and as teachers you also know that you rule out which ones would make no sense first correct mm -hmm. so there are a lot of there are examples like that uh, on the exam not that we're totally worried about that you're welcome. Yeah, I'm glad you feel special. And I know that I've left some people out of answer. So this is intermittent, but some of you, I'll make sure I remember who you are. Uh, people want to be respected, don't they? Nobody wants to feel less than. So again, examples of that. How do people show respect? How do your students show respect to you? And you know why I think about hospitality education, what's important about what you do, is because you are an example of service to your students. You just are. And you may be that only bright light that they see. And I don't need to get on the soapbox about that because you all are in the business and I know for sure what it is you do and what it feels like. And giving people a chance at a career and something that they didn't think they would have 
is life, that's life changing. That's life changing. In the hotel business, somebody would say, oh, they're just a housekeeper, or they're this, or they're that. I worked housekeeping. I dare anybody to stand up and clean 16, 17 rooms. And the people who are the best ones, you take a look at what are themes. What, what happened at Disney at one point with themes for housekeepers, and I took this other places, is you always find the best one, the best example, the best housekeeper, the best front office <coughs> Uh, representative, whoever said, what is it that you do? What is it that you do that makes your service so special? And, and with housekeepers we interviewed and they said, you know what? I go in the restroom and at least one time I put the seat down on the toilet and I sit and look around because every guest is going to be there at least once. See, <laughs> <laughs> so that's on tape. Andrew, I hope you're I hope I this words me. <laughs> anyway, the other thing is if they're ceiling fans, think about your own home. Come on. You know how the goop that gets around the ceiling fan? You're going, where did that come from? I'm clean. What happens is, again, in some of the, some of the resorts with, with fans, always look around. Either sit on the bed or take a look and so that you can see where the dirt is. Yeah, it is smart. And if you want to find what the best people do, who are they? What is it they do? With education. Who was the, the teacher that made the most, and you had done this, and I think about it, that made that difference in your life? Who was it? What did they say, and what did they do? Because it's all about the behavior. And with students, when you said this, or when you did that, if it's specific and sincere, then you can give that example. Then you can give that example. Yes? I, when I was reading this, I was thinking about my principal. We've had a couple of principals in our school that's had some trouble with um, the principal that we have now, um, I feel valued, I feel special, I feel respected because he's walking into my class, he's paying attention to what I do, and then he's putting it on the email so all the teachers know this was what was happening in Marilyn's class today, yes. and it was fabulous. Yes. And then, simple, and, and that's, simple stuff. And remember the old commercial about priceless? Yeah. That's priceless. Yeah. And the simple, so many simple things don't cost money, do they? Yeah. I think I saw that somewhere, ding, ding, ding on something. <laughs> but, and, and, you know, and you know what happens with that? Do you think about the times that, I know I did, I would walk out of the hotel or something would happen, and I would almost be like, did anybody see that? Or would something great happen? You know, I want to go, well, nobody's here but me. <laughs> did anybody see that? with a lost guess or something that happened that you feel like, because everything isn't gonna be, you know, clashed up and you think about it, for all the days that you did that anyway, whether the person walks in or not, it sure feels good when somebody notices it, doesn't it? And so that's what's important. And again, as we talk about service, the test is gonna be fine. We look at these elements. When you walk out of here today, what I wanna have happen is that, or my goal would be, that you think about those elements of service and even those service basics we talked about we delivered those with thousands of we call them stars <laughs> smile teamwork attitude reliability and service with passion what happens with that is we have people that came up and said you know we started practicing these at home because now everybody's into their own thing and we don't look up and smile we don't acknowledge everything and so it's just again some, some things to think about as you become a service expert did you start looking did they greet me were they authentic so let's look at these seven elements and we're going to take a look at a few of these and then before you take your test we may even see some videos just to remind you just to review some examples and what I would say to you and this is another thing that would just be so great as you go into your classrooms and when you're thinking about it, when you, when, when you see great examples of guest service and you're on the receiving end, is that you share those with your students. And I, I like, the, with the seven elements, to even journal some of those, to say, when did I see examples of this and this? What are, what are those stories? What are those examples? So that you can say to your students, as I did the folks who are in the developmental, the areas that they said, we're just gonna be, we're just gonna be uh, kitchen stewards. Okay, you're just gonna be a kitchen steward. What happens if your whole department isn't there? What happens? 
You fed a banquet to 2,000 people or 500 people. And those same people are going to come eat breakfast the next day. Think you aren't important in this organization? But again, that leader has to make sure that they feel that way. But with your folks, to be able to say, you are going, you are in culinary, you are, this is your vocation, and what wonderful careers are there. But if you're in this business, you are part of a service industry, a hospitality industry, and let's talk about what that looks like. And have them start looking for examples of service. Because unfortunately, some of it's a lost art, isn't it? I think it is. Okay, let's look at our seven, the seven elements. Now, we're going to look at these individually, and I'm going to show you maybe a video or two just to nail a story. The way this textbook or this participant guide is arranged is that you have a, an element of service. There is a video that goes with it. And what American Hotel Lodging did was the stories about was about a professional in the hospitality industry. So they filmed actors, but then they had the person, the real person, that was highlighted here. And you all know too, as far as materials, that can date something quickly too. So this is this is in rewrite. I'm not making. I think they're I think they're great materials. The, the uh, visuals are good, but what's more important is the message. These are seven elements. And what you have to think about is that, that, that all of them, when you combine them, that's what makes guest service gold. With the materials, you have each of the elements, an example, and then in the, the last pages, you have how would you, they ask the student, how would you combine these? And then there's an action plan. So now that you know it, what are you going to do about it? And that's what the rest of the information is around. And the first one is, there is a word, and, I, and again, this is the teacher part of me that drives me crazy, but I'm going to say it. In this, they are numbered one to seven, yes? In the book, they are, they are not in this order. <laughs> and uh, they are aware of it. There's an awareness. Is it okay if I say that, Andrea? Okay. There is an, an awareness, so not to, but keep in mind, you don't deliver these in order necessarily anyway, and it's all around combinations. My brain has to go one, two, three, four, five, seven, because I think that's logical. They are numbered, yes they are. All right, so if we look, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna offer these in this order on the slide, is that all right with you? And I can tell you which page to go to and I will look at the top so that I give you the correct page. But here they are. Keep it real. And before we even go there, what's a word for keeping it real? <coughs> Authenticity. Being authentic. People need to be more like the velveteen rabbit than a robot. Check-ins at 1 p.m. Check-ins at 1 p.m. I'm on a one-woman campaign to stop out, no problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. May I have a glass of water? No problem. How about a salt pepper shake? No problem. No problem. So that pretty soon it's, I didn't know I was, but I guess I was a problem. And as much as I love, do you have Chick-fil-A out here? There's a lot of great training around Chick-fil-A, but it, sometimes after I hear my pleasure 18 times, it's almost like Blockbuster, Blockbuster used to be, you walk and you know the bell digs, they go, hello. Yeah. And then someone else walks in, hello. So authentic, you know, is, is something. And just give me some, what are some antonyms of authentic? Fake. Fake. Fraudulent. Fraudulent. Robotic. Robotic, yeah. The thing, so you can tell if someone is giving you personal attention. So if on an exam something talked about um, authentic service, I think you could nail it. I believe you could. So that's your, that's your authenticity. And the word with authenticity is, and this is on page seven, keep it real. Keep it real. Just the, here on the, in the Bay Area, we have the best fast food training is in and out Burger. I want to go. The best fast food. Oh, you have to. I have never, and one time I was doing some work in Dallas, and there was one right beside the Nilo Hotel, and I didn't go get a thing. 
Oh, you gotta go. Yeah, you have to go. There's one just down there. There is. <laughs> I know if you're making a shuttle. Making a shuttle will take me there. It's right on the way. We can hook you up. I love this place. I love it. Um, I tell you what we're going to do with AV, if you would, for a second. I'm going to show you this video so you can get the drill just to see the, the example of authenticity. Authenticity. What does it mean to me? It means keeping it real. It means you're motivated to do something, to provide great service from the heart. Not because you expect something in return or, or because you have to. You do it because you genuinely want to make a guest happy. You have an emotional investment in it. And that's where you get your satisfaction. One day before our national convention and the registration packets had the wrong information. A disaster. I called the printer. What, what do you mean you can deliver by tomorrow? That is when everybody is arriving to register. I thought I was going to have a coronary. I thought I was going to have to grab one of our property's new defibrillators. Becky, what can I do? How can I help? Tell me what you need. I do not have time to go pick up the corrections. I have to be here tomorrow. I know how important this is to you. Give me a copy of the packet with the corrections. I'll go pick up the reprint of the printers tomorrow. I can't ask you to do that. You don't have to. It would be my pleasure. Of course it wasn't as simple as that. When I got to the printers, I found several other errors. I've done a lot of proofreading for our own press releases. It took two more trips to the printers to get everything right. But in the end, we got the materials to the convention, correct and on time. It's perfect. Tammy, you are a miracle worker. How am I ever going to thank you? You just did. To some people, a picture is worth a thousand words. To me, that smile, knowing you've really been there for someone and helped, that smile is worth even more. That's the real Tammy. Be nice. <laughs> she looks way more authentic. <laughs> You're right. That's the real world. That's exactly right. Uh, and let, let's stop here for a minute. When you think about authenticity, and I want to make an, I do an example of it with the convention business, a couple of things. In, in many hotels, you have people who have, have attendees coming in. They're, they're looking for materials. They need things. And nothing, nothing can make a meeting planner or make someone panic more than to think, I don't have the materials I need, I don't have what I need, it's no fault of my own, it's on some truck somewhere, something's happened. So it's very important that, that the people understand that in the business. The other thing is, it's so important, and again, I think it could be important for you to think about, is that when situations happen and people are looking for packages or looking for a uh, product, it's always important to make sure that we, we have the name and the numbers of the people. How may I get in touch with you? Because sometimes information or materials can end up in a dock somewhere or in a, uh, out of the bell stand. So it's always important in any type of service situation to always have the number, a number and a way to locate the individual or the meeting planner. I think that's just something that's worth, worth mentioning here for sure. Let's, let's take a look at uh, Let's take a look at um, initiative. Yeah. Aloha. Thank you for choosing the Aqua Waikiki Wave, our hotel. The weather should be great today. Have a wonderful time. Letitia your guest room attendant. I was surprised, pleasantly, but surprised. I mean, who writes handwritten notes these days? Nobody. I'm in the people service business. I do convention planning, but when I saw this heartfelt thank you notes while on vacation, even I was impressed. Although Letitia is back of the house where they don't have the same opportunity to wow a guest like the front of the house, 
She proves that even a housekeeper can have a significant impact on guest experience. Each night, I sit down and write an aloha note to my guests on the 12th floor. She has 20 rooms, figure a guest per week, 52 weeks, over 12 years, that's over 12,000 notes. And nobody asked her to do this. It was purely her own creativity and her own initiative. She even writes a goodbye card to guests for the day they leave. May the spirit of Aloha always be with you. I hope you come back someday. Lots of mahalo, Leticia. Well, naturally, being a self-starter myself, I had to reward her initiative with a note of my own. Aloha, Leticia. I want to thank you again for taking such good care of me. I really appreciate everything and I'm sad to go home. It is so beautiful here. Mahalo, Becky Singh. We get more than 100 notes or guest comments a year specifically thanking Leticia. Thank you for making our stay so pleasant. Our room is always fresh and clean. Leticia was fantastic. She was kind and helpful. What a great ambassador of Aloha she is. Leticia made our room feel like Initiative comes in all sizes, efforts, and action, from the big and ambitious to the simple and meaningful. <laughs> and then the next one that we looked at was make the effort, that's taking initiative, and that one as we pointed out, I think, is on your workbook, page 21. And then you make it real for your folks by saying, how do you take initiative in the kitchen? How do you take initiative when you leave this classroom and go someplace else? What does taking initiative mean? How do you take initiative in your family? How do things look when people show those behaviors? And one of the things that I found with adults and young people who come into the hospitality industry, you have to paint the picture for them. You have to give those examples and ask them to look for those examples because unfortunately it isn't modeled for us a lot of places. And sometimes it isn't modeled at home, as you all know. So I think this is, this is good information to say, how do you make the effort? What do people do when they show that initiative? Um, Housekeepers, particularly people in hearts of the house, because your culinary folks are in the heart of the house and interact constantly with staff. So what are some traits and behaviors are involved with them? What do they need to demonstrate that doesn't have anything to do necessarily with the skill? And probably you all have been in roles where you have either, obviously at some point you've been hired or you've hired someone, and there are some skills that you, you cannot teach. And typically with these seven, or when you look at great service skills, for some people it comes naturally. It does. And they just, Oprah, Dr. Phil, <laughs> the clergy, <laughs> counselors. But even they have training. You know, they practice the skills. And we're going to talk about empathy next with active listening. So there are some people that it, it does come naturally to them. But for others, there are some skills and some things that we can talk about and teach and make sure that people are aware of what's important other than the natural skill. In interviewing many, many people and in, in teaching culture, higher attitude whenever possible. <laughs> higher attitude when possible and train the skill. All right, so that's number two, that's making the effort. And again, we've mentioned if something is lost, you try to find it. Uh, you try to find ways to go above and beyond and that's the, the personal challenge there. Another little trick I want to, not a trick, but something that's always been important with planning or strategic planning or in your classrooms or anywhere when you talk about there's an activity there that they call Blue Sky, I believe. And that's on, um, that's on page 22. A simple way to get to Blue Sky in any situation is what your as-is as is picture. If I'm writing a strategic plan and I want to pull my team together, what's my strategy? That's what is it? I'm, what am I going to do? But I need a process, and a, a quick, easy way to do blue skies as is. This is my as is picture. 
What should we be doing that we aren't doing? What should we be doing that we aren't doing? And then the third is, but what could we be doing? What could it look like? And that's a great way to get to blue sky. So there's your initiative. Let's look at the third piece of this puzzle, the puzzle pieces, and this is showing empathy. All right. Empathy. Use Your Heart is on page 12. This is where service recovery happens. Service recovery happens. You are, you've already made the effort, you're reading the need. So what happens here is how do I use my heart? Because everybody in every, every service situation, there are personal needs and practical needs going on, always. There are facts and there are feelings, would you agree? And sometimes when people have a problem, we won't let them vent the feelings. You know how sometimes if you have bad service, something's going on, all you want to do is vent? And you don't want anybody to interrupt you. You want to tell your story. You want to tell that story. And many times service workers won't let you because we say, hmm, I know that one. That's number 345. I've had this problem. I'm going to fix it because that's what they pay me to do. When people want to tell you what's wrong, vent the emotion, and want you to listen to the feelings. So anything around empathy is listening for feelings. It's around active listening, looking at that body language, what people are not saying, and even reflecting that to say, when you say empathy to start with, what does the word empathy mean? Okay, and if I put myself, and that's great, if I put myself in someone else's shoes, if I put myself in Marilyn's shoes, guess what, I have to take mine off first. Or I can't put myself in her shoes, get where I'm going. So what, we're, what you think about is, do I really understand? Am I listening to understand what it feels like to be in that spot, to be in those shoes? And that is empathy. That is empathy. How is that different from sympathy? Any? You feel sorry for them. Is that what you were going to say? I would say sympathy, you feel sorry for them, but empathy, you feel what they feel. Correct. As well. Yes. And that can be all kinds of emotions. And one of the things I want to point out, and this is, this is, although it isn't called out necessarily here, this is where the real art and beauty of customer service is. Is when somebody has a problem, how do you recover service? And that's with empathy. That is with empathy. And even labeling it. In, um, on page 14, there's an activity here. And you're going to see activities after each one of these segments. Now, again, if we took 15, 20, 30 minutes for each one of these, we would... Uh, we would go through all of this, but this is again the overview, just so that you know what's here. See how this has mood ring activity? And this talks about how you behave affects your ability to care for guests. One of the best practices, this says put your mood on hold. One of the best practices for active listening is to think about if a guest says something that demonstrates that they are excited something great's going on, or if they are overwhelmed or exhausted, the people who are the best at guest service, listen for those cues from the guest and check it out, repeat it back to them. I wanna practice just one quick role play to show you what I'm talking about. And I want you to listen for my feelings, not the facts, not the facts of my situation. Who, who will uh, role play with me? Anybody? All right, all right. Let me let me let me sit back here. All right, I am a mom, a woman, a traveler. I'm checking into a hotel. We're going to talk about active listening. Listen carefully. In any empathy, if you're empathizing with someone, and this is just an example, you can write them. I had a professor at University of Delaware who said, "All you people in hospitality waste a whole lot of money on writing role plays because you know all you have to do." I said, "No, sir." head of the department. He said, it's I say, you say. 
think of all types of situations and you walk up, you say something, and have them give it back to you. And you write your own role, please. Because that's when it's real. So with empathy, there are three things going on that have to happen. Facts, you're going to listen for the facts. You're going to listen for the feeling and apologize. So if we had plenty of time and we were going to practice empathy, we would have role plays. And I would have a card that would say, fact, feeling, apologize. I would like for you, is it Greta? Krista. Krista, I want you just to listen for my feelings, what I'm feeling, and um, give it back to me. And the other ingredient for a role play is to always say, here it comes, excuse me, do you work here? Right? Because at that point, people either want to say, <laughs> All right, you're on a front desk. Excuse me, do you work here? Yes. Okay, well, well maybe, maybe you can help me. I've been on the road all day, and um, I've been traveling from Peoria. And my two daughters, my two children are with me. And we looked specifically for a place that had a pool. You can see they're all excited. They have their little water wings and... And they're ready to go swimming, and uh, again, we've been on the road, and so I go out to the pool, because I looked in there, that was advertised, and we go out there, and, it's, and it says the, the, the pool's closed. Can you help me? Of course. <laughs> no, I want, I want you to tell me, huh? Oh, what you're feeling? Mm -hmm. oh. And talk to me. You must, I'm a... you, you're on the edge. You're, you're really, like, because the kids are wearing you out you're done with them yes. and all you wanted to do was get to that pool because you knew once they got in the That's pool you could relax right. and calm down and deal with whatever you're really having to be here for. And so how, how do I feel? That's good. You're there. Oh, I am I am what? I'm exhausted. Yes, and you were there with me. You're giving me the eye contact. If somebody, if you are one in a million, thank you. Because I want to tell you the minute you go, can you help me? What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to call maintenance and I'm going to get them down there right in a minute. Well, well, the minute someone says, you must be tired, you must be exhausted. I can see you're on the edge. Yes. And you listen for that feeling, then guess what? If I'm angry, it diffuses anger. anger. It does. The other thing is, what about my kids? How do they feel? Mom. Bingo. Bingo. They're disappointed. And I can see that your children are disappointed. Then you have me in the palm of your hand. Because nine out of ten won't do it. And I want to tell you this is something with children, grandchildren, significant others, whatever. I can teach empathy all day long and do workshops with people. All day long. And I can tell you that I was doing it one day and we worked with front office, culinary, all we're working at it, working at it. And what happens, I'll get home. Honestly, I got home, got out of the car. I've been practicing. I know the skill. I worked as a counselor, for pity's sake. You know what happened? I got off, my husband comes and he said, you know, I've, I've, it's really been a tough day. True story. And I go, ha! You think you had a <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And how long, you know how long I drove? You know how far it is from her? Because we just don't. And so what happens with empathy, and again, this is just a, a little brief piece of it. If you will listen, use your heart, active listen, but listen for that feeling. You're going to get to the facts. I watch people do it with children. You'll see the answer, the, the true story, instead of when children come home from school, well, I'm going to do this or that or something that's bad. And then you'll say, hmm, tough day. A tough day today. And then sometimes then you get the true story of what happened at school not just the surface of it. And the same way with people walking in your, in your room. It used to frustrate me, we'd stand behind, stand out in the hall between classes and they would say, you know, somebody walking go, what'd you do today? And they'd say, nothing. So people coming in and you're saying, I thought it was something, you know. Yeah. Sorry you didn't. But that's what happens with, that's what happens with empathy. And Andrew and I have had this conversation because in the materials there, you have a wreath and it's all around sympathy. No. But it is empathy using your heart when guests have a problem it absolutely is the crux of service. If I were taking an exam and looking at that, it would be things like, are you using your heart? 
Do you listen for a person's emotion? Do you listen for that? But I had to take one minute and step out and just talk to you about that a little bit because that is the skill that can truly make a difference to people. To, to into people, period. Let's look at um, let's look at number four if I find my clipper. Over here. Where is it? Oh, I was with you, Krista. Thank you. All right. Let's look at the next one. Reading the need. And that's intuitive. And we saw the video with that one. Absolutely. So one of the key things, and you're right on the money, it's called active listening. Absolutely. And I'm just going to throw one scenario. When sometimes you have a someone who's really frustrated or emotional about a schedule or a student whatnot, apply the 20-second rule of listening. Don't say a word. And listen for the active emotional things they're feeling. And very simply you say, you must be frustrated. Yeah! Now you've got it out. So now that's where you go to solve the problem. 20 seconds sometimes seems like an hour. Don't say a word, because a lot of times when something comes up, you, you're defensive, you want to say, oh, right, 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 right. That's right. Listen for 20 seconds. Try it. And even when your husband came home, he was exhausted, you didn't listen. I did not. So 15 yards, I did not. Dead no. ball that's me. right, go on. That's, so that's it. it. So that's it. And, and I since I, that since in that's appreciating right. at the college right. level that's and also right. training of mm -hmm. which we're doing here now in the 1980s. And it's when, an, when a coach comes out to you and he's in your face, it's, there's no warm and fuzzy here. You listen for, for 20 seconds, listen for the message, then repeat. You're exhausted. Yes. You're frustrated. <coughs> yes. I thoroughly understand. And you're right on money. Thank you. So do it. And, and, and it's right, too. And the, and the other thing is, you, but you don't, and you don't say, I know just how you feel, because no. you do not, and you don't. No. And you know that's a, that's a penalty for sure. Uh, with if, if you all have read, and this is, goes back for a while, but uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey's, yes. with Habit 5, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And with that one, you know what he calls it with that skill? He calls it being a faithful interpreter. But you know, Seth, a lot of people don't encourage it because that takes twice as long to do. It does. I mean, it, it, You're example, right. my sister used to be an upper manager. And they outsourced a lot of their customer service to the Philippines and to right. Brunswick. They stopped doing the verbal stuff to the Philippines because in the Philippines they'd always answer with the question, oh, you have a problem with your phone. Yes, I have a problem with my phone. Oh, and so it'd take twice as long. So the email went to the Philippines. The verbal <laughs> went to New Brunswick because it would be done in half the time. And they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is why they got taken over. But uh, Yeah, <laughs> right. And, and, you, and you think about the simple things. And the other thing that I would challenge you to do is with this scale, just today, just for today or through the weekend, notice how many times you have the opportunity to active listen to someone. Because you will. You will. Apply the 20 second rule and then listen for that emotion. That feeling. So if you'd write down feeling, facts, and apology, a sincere apology, if you're in the service business, is extremely important. I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm sorry that happened to you. That isn't who we are. That in the service of Those kinds of things. So with reading the need on page 10, and y'all, this is there's, there's, a, there, there's a lot of good information here that's killing me to go through this so quickly. But again, it, it, it's just it's the overview, and you can take a look at what are some skills that you can use and think about what do people say, what do people do. With using your intuitive or your intuition, with this and the words that you're going to see again, since you're, you are concerned about the paycheck you're going to get with your certification, <laughs> you know, your reward of the certification is that this one is that you are going to go above. You're looking at the guest needs before they know that they need it is a true skill. Under intuition, do you think I could read a sentence? Determining what a guest needs before they even know they need it. And that's what you want to show them. 
that's what you want to show. Uh, that's what you want the guests to see. How do you get information from them? Those kinds of things. Something else with intuitive is that it's important to get involved when you first read that need. When you have that sense that something isn't right, empathy is that active listening, but you don't you don't put it off. You, if your intuitive tells you something there with a guest, that's when you that's when you start working with them to make sure that something happens. Sometimes it's called how to read people. Probably everybody in here has worked with Myers Briggs, True Colors, right out of Anaheim, um, with some of those skills and knowing what people need and want. In leadership, there's a, there's a company called De Development Dimensions International. There's been a lot of work done around how to what accelerates people in leadership or what will derail them. One is being authentic. We've talked about that. Listen to that intuitive. The second is bringing out the best in people. Bringing out the best in people. And the third one is being open and receptive to feedback. Being open and receptive to feedback. That's the breakfast of champions. The breakfast of champions. Okay, so there's our intuitive. Um, examples are um, the mind reader activity on 11. And this still gets right back to active listening and body language. How they say it, how they act when they're saying it, how they act when they're not talking. What did you notice about the guest's choice of words, tone of voice? Any unusual behavior? Any questions around reading the need? See how they're all tied in together anyway? Can't. It's, it's, it's important to take a look at that. The next one then is, that I want us to take a look at, is the idea of providing surprise. In Louisiana, there's a word called lanyap. Have you heard of that? L-A-G-N-I-A-P-P-E. Have you, Andrea? Lanyap. That's giving them that little bit extra. Giving something, giving somebody a little bit more than they expected. Lanyap. That little bit more. What's that? What's that delight? What's that surprise? Can you think of a time for you that 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 happened? The example with Lego. Never thought I'd see that again. And you have to think about what, what are some things that, that people enjoy, that they like? What would surprise someone? Yes? Well, I just want to say, I always tell my students that good customer service is reading a customer's need uh -huh. and then meeting it. Yeah, and great customer service is anticipating customer needs and exceeding it. There you go. You anticipate and you exceed. The other, the, the other thing and the thing with that, yes and, when you've been in the business and you know with your students and you have a, you have a lifetime of, of things that have happened and that have worked, aren't there things <coughs> that, that, that what, sometimes what makes sense with one person doesn't with another one, but when with a lifetime in service and in working with others, when, you, when something has been great and somebody has enjoyed it so much, you can, you can try those things again, can't you? We talk about modeling that. And now I'm going to use Disney again because that's, that's part of what I know. And it can fall in some of these. There are classes on how to make animals with terry cloth. Mm -hmm. You know, so that when you come into a room, and if any of you have been on the cruise line or in the rooms, they, they're, it's amazing what people do. And typically it's your housekeepers or your housemen and people go into the room and it's, it's, it's a treat if they haven't seen that before. There may be a, a guest room where there's a lot of you know, stuffed animals. They'll tuck them in or they'll put a remote control in the, in the little plush animal, the plush toy. If you know, and a lot of hotel companies that are the larger companies have a profile. Sometimes there's some, some, some ways to surprise, but let me anticipate, let me think. Let me read your need. Let me anticipate. Let me discover. Let me delight. Let me delight. Okay. 
<clears throat> Anybody else have an example of being delighted as a guest? Yeah, you're grinning. Yeah, I am grinning. Um, we took our kids down to Disneyland. We stayed at a cheap, mm -hmm. really cheap, cheapest we could find. But when we got back in the evening, um, I have a daughter and a son. They put their two stuffed animals where they slept on their pillows and tucked them in. Mm -hmm. And my kids still talk about that. Yeah. That was Aww. just the cutest. They knew which side they slept. It was amazing. Yes. And, and and they came in and squealed because theirs were already tucked in bed. And it was exciting. And it was just adorable. Yeah. And what happens with that? What happens with that? When when service folks understand that children if someone's visiting with children that you can either get on the level with them to talk, pay attention to them, pay attention to them in a restaurant, pay attention, then that emotional connection is made with that parent. And that's delightful. It is absolutely delightful. There's a, a story that we, that we use in one of, the, one of the sessions around service that talks about, you know, when you walk into a place, there was a, it's, it happened actually somewhere in Anaheim and the person was telling the story, you know those the um, side side of the road places where they put up for Halloween the big pumpkins and you go in and buy. Pumpkin yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens is that the man goes in and he wants to exchange a, a costume. And and you know and he said my son, decide, my son decided he didn't want to be Zorro. He was going to be Zorro, but now he doesn't want to be Zorro. <laughs> Who knew? And I can't. I have this, and it has not been worn. Nothing's happened. He shows him a sign. The man said, "You have receipt." As he looks up from his device, you have a receipt? No, I don't have a receipt. Well, there's no exchanges without a receipt. Look, it hadn't been worn. He just, and the child's there. The child is there. And the, and the, the exchange goes on. He said, well, how about if I see your supervisor? Because the person's getting angry, angrier and angry. He said, he's going to tell you the same thing. He's going to tell you the same thing. It ain't going to matter. But, but the emotional connection and the connection is broken because the child is disappointed and here's the dad and they can it can be resolved but once those connections are broken it isn't about you anymore it's about disappointing you know disappointing the child and that's again the emotional connection is everything on positives and on negatives extremely important six is that follow through I own it. It's my responsibility. Keeping your promises. I brought, I do have some examples, and we can talk about that as we do the, um, the test. This is a, there was executive VP, Lee Cockle, who came out of Marriott, who works at Disney, did a little book called The Customer Rules. I ordered it used off Amazon, but there are 37 stories, 37 rules that talk about service. It's customer service isn't a department. Don't get bored with the basics. Look everyone in the eye and smile, speak first and last, know your stuff, discover and delight. You know, or these, make it right, read the need, but back it up with examples and follow through. I own it, I own it, I own it. If something's wrong in my guest room, and I call to have that attended to, then my expectation is then someone's going to call me back and say, did it happen for you? How's that working? We used an acronym in our customer recovery that was something called late. Listen, apologize, take action, ensure satisfaction. It's never too late to make it right, as long as that customer's there, that guest is there. Guests may not always be right, but they're always our guest. Those kinds of things. Follow through, keeping the promises. There's probably been more work done on and research done on guest service at uh, Texas A&M University than anywhere. And as a loyal Gator, I hate to admit it, but but a gentleman by the name of Lynn Berry he did a book called On Great Service, and he said number one is that reliability. You expect that if someone makes a promise, they keep it. That they keep it. And another one of his was another one that he mentioned was going to do that. Guest recovery. So 
follow through. If I have it, I own it. Let me make sure there isn't something that you might need to know. Outstanding service is a prop is a promise. What may I do? What do I need to do? And when you know the difference, it's it's really heartbreaking because sometimes the things that, that need to that can be solved don't cost any money. They're just someone taking the time and the and and the, and the attention to detail and the follow through to make sure you're, that we are not only satisfied but we're delighted. And it's so much easier to do that instead of having to go back. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's it's so it's so much easier. Yesterday when I well, I'll tell you two things. One, I used Uber service from the airport because I knew if I rented a car, I would still be somewhere lost right now. There's no question. The driver was absolutely delightful, a student from Germany. And it was just almost like a tour guide, too. It was great. I'll always remember that. He was, in my view, a guest hero because I was nervous and I hadn't used that service before and I'm not giving a commercial. I'm just saying what a, what a great experience it was. And when, I, when we pulled up to the Hyatt, the young man who was on the door, the Hilton, I'm sorry, the young man who was on the door was just, it was like, hi, we're, we're glad you're here, we're glad you made it. And just, he was just super. And I met the general manager later in the, in the day because I'm trying to get transportation here and I tried Uber again and it was hard to find golf club lane because they came to the parking lot but there wasn't you know you weren't really sure but he was great too but I told the general manager when I was looking for a, a shuttle I said I don't know about the young man I know I know he too was a student and I just said well, whatever you do you need to keep him in our business you know we need people like him because I don't come <laughs> way early in, like in the <coughs> East Coast and then it was just so great to just my energy at level was just up, just like that. Today, I met St. Peter. <laughs> Same way, I have my, my uh, guest hero. I'm walking, and the way I came in today was different from yesterday. So everything looked different to me. And this gentleman is walking, and he, he asked me, where I was going, I told him, I said, well, last night I was at the Norseman, and I know it's in the same building. And and he said, well, you know, there's so much, so much construction going on around here, even we can't find anything. So we're talking, he said, come with me, I'll take you. And so we were talking, and he said, now, what is it you're gonna do? And I told him where I was coming, and he said, he asked me if I knew a, a person named Judy. <laughs> and I said, yes, I met Judy last night, or I met her. And he's talked about how well respected she is, and that's not a commercial, but he was talking about her. So we're talking, and he said, here, come on, no, let's, we need to do this. And we're going to go through here. And I said, you know, I was getting a little nervous, and I, and I was thinking about guardian angels or something like that. He was, he was very, very nice. And so he asked me about what I was doing. And I said, what do you do? What do you do? And he said, oh, I'm the president <laughs> of the college. So I went, well, all righty then. But but I'm talking. I wasn't close by, and he was great. And he started talking about the construction, the work that's been doing. He talked about how great this program is, and he was saying all of that. And then so at the end, I said, "So I could honestly say that today I met St. Peter, huh? He got me up here." And he said, "Yeah." But that's that's a champion. And you all can think of those situations where, again, with with seven with seven elements, that ha this happens to be this recipe. So what I would say, if you, can use, if you can use that recipe, even to introduce it, then you're looking at keeping it real. You know, being authentic, intuitive. And you all know that sixth sense, that feeling something, something just isn't right. You know, keeping it real, meeting the need, using your heart, using your heart. Surprise and delight. Surprise and delight. Follow through. Deliver. Result. 
You know, we, this can be the best program. Your program can be great, but, but people expect results. You know, that's, that's why we do, we do what we do. I've done a lot of work with culture. How do people build culture? How do you do that? Guess what? No business, no culture. No business, no culture. The people who do it best, and you can just check it off. Where, where is the service the best? And you have your checklist of these seven elements and what they look like. And if someone is a hero or a guest service hero, how many of these, these issues and areas do they excel in? As far as these materials and what you have, if you could use the, the little map with the seven and just talk about those. My friend Dean made the slides for me. I'm a-okay with you having those seven slides if that would help you in any way. Just to say, let's look at these. Let's keep a journal. Let's keep a journal. And you all start watching where you see these seven things. And let's talk about them. I used to, in my classroom, have what I call service first agenda. We talked about, and this is in hospitality education, because I did have the opportunity to work for uh, three different community colleges with teaching hospitality adjunct. That's the way we do it. And then in classes in the hotels, and in the highest book, when people ask me, do you have a heart? Do you have a heart for helping other people? Do you have that? And then the other thing is that every agenda, because I'd always tell a trainer, if you have one thing, have your map, have your agenda. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it, and we're going to talk about it. Like we came in today, what is it we're going to do? We're going to talk about the essentials of service, and we're going to focus on seven, seven areas. We're going to look at a couple of videos. And then what happens is on every agenda I had service first. That was number one. Let's talk about service. Let's talk about service. Anybody been anywhere? Great. And sometimes we have people in our business who have never seen it. And I think it's wonderful if we travel and go to field trips. I think another one is you say, can you get five-star service at in and out Burger? Yes, you can. What makes it different? Do you get five-star service at a restaurant that we talked about earlier today? Yes. Let's look at the seven. And so that's, that's sort of it in, uh, in a nutshell. I had several objectives today. One is that with every person or in everything I present, I want to hit three things. I hope that something touched your head. That even if we're talking about service and it's even basic, that something hit you intellectually and you thought, you know, that's a good thought. Probably came from somebody else in here. The second one is that something may have touched your heart. Something. Even if we to remember that we flatter those we scarcely know and praise a fleeing guest and deal many a thoughtless blow to those who know us best or who love us best, something, and that something can touch your funny bone. Your head, your heart, your funny bone. And I think we laughed a little bit today. And I hope that you'll use those objectives in your classroom because people need to be intellectually challenged. You need to touch their hearts. And they have a heart for the business. And you surely need to be